Welcome to the world of Aston Martin ownership. Just look at this thing. When you drive it, you are the boss. And unlike owning a Ferrari, the haters don't be hating. Everyone who sees this car absolutely loves it. When I heard Aston was bringing back the Vanquish nameplate for 2014, my first thought was, dear God, let the car be worthy of that name. And holy hell is it worthy. Just look at it, a blend of DBS, Vanquish, and 177, creating something evolutionary and modern, yet undeniably sexy and functional. Every body panel is made of carbon fiber. Under the hood, they updated the 6-liter V12 with more direct-injected goodness, and it now makes 565 horsepower and 457 pounds of torque. The interior is all new as well. And finally, gone are the myriad of identical buttons and Volvo nav system, replaced by an updated version of the glass panel interface from the 177. And unlike other touch panels we used, this one actually works. You'd be amazed at how helpful just having four knobs and lines outlining where the buttons are supposed to be really is. Like, there's knobs for what you need, and there's buttons for what you need less often, and they're all very clearly marked where to touch. It's all about relationships with these cars. Everything is a rule of thirds. All Astons, not just the Vanquish. Like, the height of the grill to the height of the entire car here. That is going to be a third to two thirds. This strip versus the height of this whole thing, that's going to be exactly a third. This window is going to be exactly a third of the whole height of the car there. And they do that the whole way around the car, and every Aston follows that formula, which is why they all kind of look the same. But at the same time, that seems to be the magic number because they all look awesome compared to Ferraris, which are kind of hit or miss. The most complicated piece of the whole body is this back trunk panel here with the integrated spoiler. Some don't like it. I think it's really cool, but it is one piece, the whole thing, and it is uh, the most complicated body panel to make, and it takes multiple days just to make this panel right here. It's extremely light. It's wild. Now, sure, this car isn't a leader in technology, but that's really not what Aston is about. You know, they don't need to be a leader in technology as long as they keep making cars that look and drive like this. You know, Tokyo may be more technologically advanced than Lake Como, but I don't see George Clooney partying it up in Tokyo. And that dude's a pimp. Except, well, there is one thing. Normally, I wouldn't mention it because I know how to drive, but this is the one case where I'd really like to have one of those overhead satellite view cameras for when I'm parking, because I have absolutely no idea where that front wheel is. I can't see it, it's really hard to place, and I've already curbed the wheel in the first day driving this car. That's gonna be expensive. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about something more important, like the sound it makes when you mash the go pedal. Even though the new Vanquish has the same engine architecture as my older one, the sounds are different. They say when you buy an exotic, 90% of your money goes to the sound. No disappointments here. But whereas my car is like a perfect pub meal, you know, a great burger, it's got one really solid flavor. This is like a symphony. It's like, it's like an Iron Chef meal where there's layers and subtleties and little nuances and by using the manual shift paddles, I, I'm the conductor of this wonderful symphony, and I can make the engine sound however I want. I can go, I can go down here and just be nice and quiet. I can drop a gear. I mean, there is nothing like the sound of a V12. It echoes in a way that even like really good smaller engines just can't do. The sound just carries in this wonderful way. Then there's the performance. Though dollar for dollar, you're better off with a Lamborghini. It's not like the Vanquish isn't fast. Zero to 60 comes in just under four seconds with a top speed of 183 miles an hour. 
even a Corvette is going to be a better performance value. There is no such thing as performance value in Aston Martin. But if you dwell on the numbers, if you're one of those bench racers that really cares what a 0-60 to 60 number is or a G-pad number or, or whatever, Aston Martin ownership is not for you. That's not what this car is about. That's not what it's meant to do. This feels and drives like a thoroughly modern car. You know, the six-speed automatic, world's better than the transmission I have in my car. Not quite as good as a dual clutch. It doesn't downshift with the kind of authority that I'd really like it to downshift with, but it's responsive, it does what's asked of it, and more importantly, the automatic mode does work really well. I love that it's got hydraulic steering. They haven't gone electric. You can really feel the road through the steering wheel. The suspension's more advanced now. It's adjustable dampers, three-way. You got comfort, sport, and track. It's not the kind of car that I want to go out and tear ass through a canyon or take on a track day. I like having this much power, but what I really want to do in a Vanquish is just cruise. Just listen to that sound, enjoy my surroundings, check out the view, all the things that you only get to do in an Aston. Sure, the Bentley GT Speed is faster, has an actual usable back seat, all-wheel drive, and will probably make a better daily driver. It also weighs a half a ton more than the Vanquish, won't get you a second look in Beverly Hills, and it's severely lacking in the love department. Any Aston, especially the Vanquish, is heavy in hand-built love. There are literally millions of possible exterior and interior combinations. You can choose your own color, your own trim, your own fabric, your own name monogrammed into the door sill. If you like, you can guarantee that your Vanquish is unlike any other Vanquish on the road, a true one-of-one -one model of building. On this particular road, which is constantly getting wrecked by moving landmass, it's actually a pretty serious earthquake zone. The suspension and comfort mode, the Vanquish is doing a fantastic job, actually. A lot more comfortable on this road than my truck is. There is one bit of design fail in this car that really bothers me, and I don't know how anyone didn't catch this. The seat controllers are right here on the inside of the tunnel, which is right where my leg rubs. So if I hit the brakes, I end up hitting the switch, and then my seat starts to go forward. Why didn't someone catch that? Of course, individuality does come at a price, and the word handmade implies a few things usually implies top-notch materials, total levels of customization, and, and, and exclusivity that you don't get with something built on an assembly line. However, with that, you get some imperfections sometimes. My Vanquish has it. It's the sign of being handmade. And even right here, some of this stitching doesn't line up. There's some stitching over here that doesn't line up. There's a little bit of leather down here that's well, not quite perfect. This could be just an early model, but again, when you're buying something handmade, especially something as complicated as a car, you kind of got to take your lumps with your exclusivity. Starting at $280,000, this Aston isn't for everyone. And even though it's sold out for the next 18 months, the odds of seeing one at your local Starbucks are incredibly small. But for the owner who doesn't spend his time talking numbers on forums, for the owner who wants to be different while remaining tasteful, who wants to make a statement and have that statement not include the word douchebag, who wants to road trip in comfort with a beautiful woman on his arm, the 2014 Vanquish is the end-all and be-all of GT cars. Aston ownership is about sensation, not data. It's about touch, sight, and sound, not lateral Gs, lap times, or drag racing.